They are the faces of those who've left a trail of terror and tears in Washington. I uh, actually was Gary Ridgway's landlord. Serial killers you've seen and the most prolific killer you've never heard of. This guy may have killed more than Bundy. Tonight, we take you on a journey across the state. Well, this is the Green River. And into the minds of Washington's serial killers. What is yeah. the most common trait in a serial killer beyond killing? We know the names of Ted Bundy and Gary Ridgway, the Green River Killer, but their notoriety is the exception. Most serial killers remain a mystery. Yeah, and tonight, Cairo 7's Dave Wagner takes you along for the ride with two men trying to learn more about the minds and motivations of Washington serial killers. In a state of breathtaking beauty, there's a dark history of being home to some of the most prolific serial killers in America. 98% of serial killers in the world, nobody's ever heard of them, even the ones that have been caught. Today, we're along for the ride with Canadian serial killer profiler Lee Miller. If you want to talk to someone about serial murder in Canada, I'm the guy to go to. Right over there. And Cloyd Steiger a retired Seattle homicide detective who leads the Washington Attorney General's cold case unit. They lie. I personally handled two different serial killing cases in my time as a homicide detective. Two men from different generations. And the railroad yard's just down the hill. It's like yin and yang, right? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right down the hill. We talk a lot. Who share a common interest in exploring the minds of killers. Today, they're in Tacoma outside the childhood home of Ted Bundy. Well, he would have been here from at least, I think, 1951. He would talk about going out in this neighborhood here and looking through garbage bins for pictures of nude women and reading detective magazines and drinking and looking through windows, trying to spot naked women, voyeurism, right? How, this is how a lot of it starts. It's called a preparatory paraphilia. Among the earliest victims Ted Bundy is suspected of targeting was Anne Marie Burr. The eight-year-old was kidnapped from her Tacoma home, a short distance away from where Bundy lived as a teenager. They found a footprint from a size six or seven Ked sneaker. Now six or seven, that's probably... About a 14-year-old kid. Yeah, and that would have been Ted Bundy, Ted Bundy yeah. at the time. Bundy denied any involvement. Some of them are proud of what they did. Some of them are really ashamed of what they did. Not because of some sort of moral thing. It's that they still care about their reputation because your reputation is what advances you socially. Anne Marie's mother died not knowing what happened to her daughter. If we don't get an answer, we'll just have to keep going on and, and, and pray. While Bundy admitted to 30 murders, he's not the most prolific serial killer with ties to Tacoma. Headlines reveal that deadly distinction belongs to Jake Bird. Nobody's really heard of Jake Bird. A man convicted of killing a mother and daughter inside this house on October 30th, 1947. Jake Bird took an ax from the back shed. The neighbors heard the screaming. So the police show up, they find Jake Bird completely covered in blood. Bird was tied to 46 murders, traveling state to state while working for the railroad. This is proof that there were serial killers roaming the United States, praying from state to state long before Ted Bundy. In fact, Ted Bundy wasn't even the first interstate serial killer in Tacoma. While we are shooting interviews outside this house, in custody, an SUV pulls up to warn us what happened here 71 years ago. I don't know what you guys are filming about, but I wouldn't stand in front of this house mm -hmm. if it's something good. That's all bad. Oh, yeah. Rachel Barr has read all about Jake Bird, but she personally knows another serial killer, Gary Ridgway, the Green River Killer. I uh, actually was Gary Ridgway's landlord in an what? apartment complex in Federal Way, Appian Way Apartments. Did you know him? Oh, uh, yeah, I remember. He told me he hit a dog one night covered in blood. Please came and talked to me about it. I'm sorry for killing all those young ladies. Ridgway was convicted of killing 49 women. He confessed to 71. Things can get way dangerous around here. Many of them prostitutes in Seattle. Some of their bodies were dumped here along the Green River in South King County. Are serial killers better 
at covering their tracks than other killers? By necessity, that's what makes them serial killers. If they weren't good at covering their tracks, they wouldn't get up to that number so quickly. It took 20 years to catch Gary Ridgway and bring him to justice. In part because he didn't look dangerous to the prostitutes he picked up in places like Aurora Avenue. That's the high risk lifestyle that is the most likely to be victim of a serial killer. They know there's a predator out there because they were looking for the boogeyman and this guy's just a regular guy. He's not the boogeyman, right? Yes. Ridgeway even passed a lie detector test that measures in part your heart rate. One of the core characteristics of a psychopath is they have a low resting heart rate. I'm still going to kick it. They constantly need to be doing more and more exhilarating things. What is yeah. the most common trait in a serial killer beyond killing? Envy. They resent everyone else. They feel constantly on the periphery of the social world. Miller says Ted Bundy was a textbook example of a serial killer propelled by envy. Ted was very class conscious. Targeting young college women with long hair. He could have killed me. So Tria Critzona says she was picked up by Bundy. I was sobbing and praying and pleading for my life crappy. And then released when he discovered her hair under her hat had just been cut short. Bundy's victims all had long hair. Perhaps he didn't find women with short hair particularly attractive because they didn't fit the ideal model of beauty. <laughs> Two women with long hair did not escape Ted Bundy during a Rainier Beer annual picnic at Lake Sammamish in July of 1974. Cairo 7 first showed you this film, which reveals Bundy's VW Bug in the background. The park was filled with beachgoers and people having picnics and events. Bundy kidnapped and killed 23-year-old Janice Ott and 19-year-old Denise Naslin, believed to be his last victims. And this was the, the first time he did it in broad daylight, broad daylight too. Right, right. I wouldn't be surprised if Ted made a conscious decision to try and pull off two victims at the same time in broad daylight simply because he was growing bored with getting away with it. The bodies of Odd and Naslin were found about two months later, dumped in a wooded area about two miles away. Do you believe if we had the technology back then that we have now, Ted Bundy, and Gary Ridgway would have been arrested a lot sooner. I believe they probably would have been arrested a lot sooner, yes. And this veteran homicide detective says there is old evidence just sitting on shelves in police departments across the country that needs to be retested. Sometimes a serial killing case is just one murder to you, but you don't realize that they've murdered somewhere else out of the state or they're moving around. So that comes up a lot in cold cases. Ted Bundy dumps some of his victims in remote parts of Taylor Mountain. It's a place that's stunning by day scary at night. It's creepy. It's almost like we're walking into his psyche, honestly. Like it's a dark, private, personal world where you can be judge, jury, and executioner. As this dark day comes to an end. It's truly haunting right. being out here at night. Floyd Steiger's focus turns from killers to the victims and the families who are waiting for answers. And there's so many missing women. I absolutely think of the families. That's exactly why you do it. And those are the people that need to be remembered that are often forgotten in the process. Floyd Stocker says as far as he knows, there are no active serial killer investigations here in Washington. What remains a concern, though, is how many police departments have untested evidence that could connect the crimes of serial killers across the country. Oh, some pretty chilling connections that could still be made. No doubt about it. All right. Thanks so much, Dave.